Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about SoFi Technologies, Palantir Technologies, Neo Stock, Lucid Stock, as well as Tesla Stock. We'll be analyzing a plethora of articles to where the first one is titled, SoFi Schedules Conference Call to Discuss Quarter 1 2023 Results, and spoiler alert, they are very good and their future projections are even better, so this is going to be a phenomenal news update for SoFi shareholders. Up next, we'll talk about how SoFi has officially acquired a mortgage lender, which we talked about in a prior video where I said that SoFi Technologies could be undergoing an acquisition, and I know you all love that video very much and this is just further proof that yes the news on this channel is accurate it actually came true and our predictions also came true regarding how they acquired the company and how this is going to positively impact them and benefit them as time progresses after that we'll talk about palantir technologies regarding why the stock recently popped by five percent but they are also falling in their share price as of today despite the company expanding their cloud partnership with microsoft so we'll be going over the pros and cons and latest news updates for Palantir Technologies. Up next, we are going to compare the Chinese EV company, which is NIO, to Lucid, which is an American electric vehicle company. And then after that, we will conclude the video talking about the big kahuna, which is Tesla, and how Elon Musk's swelling inventories of unsold Tesla cars have worried Wall Street. However, I don't think this is as big of a deal as many other investors seem to think, so I will be adding my own personal educated opinion on that. So for more news updates on SoFi Technologies, Palantir Technologies, Neo, Lucid, and Tesla, go and annihilate that like button right now, comment your thoughts down below, subscribe if you are new, and without further ado, let's dive right into today's stories. SoFi Technologies, as you probably already know, is a digital finance company that operates as a digital bank, and they have recently announced plans to hold a conference call to discuss their financial and operating results for the first quarter of 2023, which will be done on May 1st. If you want to watch this live, this is going to be done at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. And if you go to SoFi Technologies' website, specifically over on their investor relations section of their website, you can access this. Also, I always link and list my sources in the description. So if you want to click on this Yahoo Finance article and go to this particular link, you can watch that conference call live on May 1st at 8 a.m. So I think overall, this is going to be a very positive earnings report because from my personal projections with me doing my own model, and analysis on the company, we are anticipated to have a very fruitful earnings report and future earnings reports and revenues are going to be phenomenal. So I'm very excited for this and I think it's going to benefit SoFi shareholders through the overall SoFi share price increasing. Now let's talk about how our prediction of SoFi Technologies acquiring a mortgage lender not only happened, but it happened the way we wanted to. If you've followed this story over the next few days, a lot of people are saying that yes, they acquired the company, but they're not talking about how this is going to benefit SoFi Technologies fundamentally. SoFi Technologies acquisition of a mortgage lender puts SoFi Technologies leagues ahead of other financial institutions. That's why the author of this article as well as myself are very bullish and positive on SoFi stock, especially as they continuously diversified their overall business model. As you know, SoFi Technologies used to be solely a student loan refinancing company, but since the student loan moratorium and various student loan laws have come into place and they have hurt that overall market segment, SoFi has used this as an opportunity to diversify their overall business into multiple segments, which is making the company more diversified, safer, better for investors, and it increases their overall revenues and projected profitability. As you know, in the fourth quarter of 2023, I believe and many experts believe that this company could bring in profitability, but as of right now, SoFi is not a profitable company. But what does this acquisition mean for SoFi going into the future? Well, currently, many investors are somewhat skeptical about financial institutions, including SoFi Technologies, and they are not investing into them, but I think right now is the best time to invest into financial institutions considering this volatility. Not only are you going to get these companies at a phenomenally cheap share price, but the future growth trajectory of these companies are amazing. I'm talking about JP Morgan, Charles Schwab, Bank of America, SoFi Technologies, Ally Bank, and many others just like those. All of those companies that I've mentioned, I personally own in my portfolio. For SoFi Technologies specifically, I have around a 4% portfolio allocation. The reason why investors are somewhat skeptical about this overall market and industry is considering that Silicon Valley and Signature Bank failed. But SoFi Technologies is not at risk of failing in the slightest. They are a much safer company. They have higher 
FDIC insurance, they have safer overall covered deposits, and SoFi is just unique compared to these other companies. By SoFi acquiring a mortgage lender, it further diversifies themselves, and the particular lender that they acquired, which was Wyndham Capital Mortgage, was done through an all-cash transaction, which is exactly what I wanted SoFi Technologies to do. In my last video that I talked about this, I actually said that they had two options for acquiring a new company, but their best option would be an all-cash transaction, considering that they have a load of cash on their balance sheet, but they do also have a relatively high debt level. Load. I think Wyndham Capital Mortgage is a perfect fit for SoFi Technologies, and this is going to benefit their overall revenues, and it's going to help SoFi Technologies scale very effectively. SoFi is continuously impressing investors, bringing in more revenue, making phenomenal acquisitions, and it just makes this company fundamentally more solid. The CEO of SoFi Technologies even commented on their buyout of this mortgage lender, and he says that it will allow SoFi to scale and keep pace with accelerated growth. In essence, SoFi Technologies already has a phenomenal growth rate, but through this acquisition, it's going to further impress investors, which will reflect in their future projections for their next earnings report and even in this upcoming conference call. That's another reason why I believe this conference call will be very positive, and I think the share price will increase between 5 to 8 percent right after their conference call on May 1st. So what does this mean for investors such as you and I? Is SoFi stock a buy? And what do experts and professionals think about this company? Right now, SoFi stock has a moderate buy according to Wall Street because eight professionals have a buy rating for this company and three say to hold this company. I also want to say that no analysts right now that were surveyed say to sell this company and considering their current share price, they have an average price target and price prediction for their SoFi stock of $8.20, implying upside potential of 38.6% for investors over the next 12 months. I think SoFi Technologies is easily worth more than $8.20. However, even at taking this moderate buy rate, and this average price target from professionals, investors are anticipated to have a very fruitful 2023 and 2024, so this is phenomenal news for SoFi shareholders. Now let's talk a little bit about Palantir Technologies, ticker symbol PLTR, which is a big data and analytics company that serves both commercial enterprises as well as government clients and agencies. SoFi Technologies recently surged by around 5% in the pre-market after it was announced that the company's Palantir Federal Cloud Service, also known as PFCS, achieved achieved their Fed ramp authorization, which is a huge news. This is going to help Palantir Technologies support more wide workloads from the U.S. Department of Defense, also known as the DOD. Also, they have teamed up with Microsoft to where Palantir said in a statement, according to their president of Palantir USG, said with the successful completion of Fed ramp or Fed RAMP and IL-4, which is impact level 4 and impact level 5 accreditation on Microsoft. Microsoft Azure Commercial and Azure Government, Palantir and Microsoft are prepared to bring best-in-breed solutions to the federal government. However, for me personally, I am more impressed with their commercial segment. Palantir also wants to eventually achieve an impact level 6, which is going to further integrate them into the United States government and other U.S. allies. All in all, Palantir is also diversified between government and commercial enterprises. They're bringing in phenomenal revenue, and although I believe the remainder of of 2023 will be very volatile for PLTR shareholders in 2024 and 2025, this company is scaling their profitability at an astounding rate. So if you plan to hold this company for the long term, you are in luck. Now let's jump over and talk about some electric vehicle companies that I've reported on, such as Neo and Lucid. Some of you wanted me to compare these companies, so let's dive right into it. Neo is an electric vehicle company located over in China, while Lucid is a United States EV maker that has strong backing from Saudi Arabian investors. So which of these companies are better in my opinion? And which of these companies do I own more of? Well, let's start off talking about NEO. NEO right now currently sells four types of SUVs, which would be their ES8, their ES6, their EC6, and their ES7. On the other hand, they also have two very well-selling sedans called the ET5 and the ET7. They have a phenomenal subscription-based model for their battery swapping stations, which are far more efficient than battery charging stations, and I also want to say that NEO grew their overall deliveries in 2020 by 113%. Then in 2021, they grew their deliveries by 109%. In 2022, they grew them by 34%, while their revenue is scaling by around 36% in 2022 to $7.1 billion. So this company is rapidly scaling, and although the growth rate of their deliveries 
faltered in 2022. For 2023 and 2024, we are anticipated to see a huge resurgence because they are coming out with new vehicle models, which will increase overall demand. Also, $7.1 billion for this company is phenomenal considering that their overall market cap worth is only $15 billion, meaning you're getting a phenomenal deal. They also have a pretty good gross margin coming in at around 10.44%. Now there is a risk for this company considering that it is a foreign company and their net loss widened during this time from 3 billion yuan to 12.1 billion yuan which equates to 1.8 billion dollars. However, during the second half of 2023, that's when we can anticipate growth for this overall company and we can anticipate that this widening adjusted net loss, which is negative, will either slow or completely reverse and that's what I'm waiting for. Like we mentioned, their growth and their overall deliveries cooled off in 2022 and the beginning of 2023. However, NEO's growth will likely reaccelerate after the second half of 2023. Professionals currently anticipate that this company's revenue will jump by around 74% up to $12.5 billion this year. On top of that, their net loss is anticipated to decrease down to $1.7 billion instead of $1.8 billion. The company also has a phenomenal amount of cash on hand, considering that they currently hold on their balance sheet cash, cash equivalents, numbering $6.6 .6 billion. Essentially, if you can hold this company until the second half of 2023, you will experience phenomenal growth for this company, and they're only trading at around $8.92, and professionals believe this company should minimally be worth $20 or higher. But that's NEO. Let's talk about Lucid now. Right now, Lucid is struggling to ramp their overall production, and they do anticipate to also release a new vehicle, which would be their Gravity SUV in 2024. The company originally wanted to produce around 20,000 vehicles in 2022, but due to supply chain constraints and other macroeconomic uncertainties, they only produced around 7,180 vehicles. On top of the ones that they produced, they only delivered 4,369 of those vehicles, generating revenue of around $608 million. Now, this is a huge leap from what they brought in in 2021, because in 2021, their revenues numbered only $27 million. So yes, they are scaling their revenue at a very impressive rate, but they did post net losses of around $2.6 billion, which is substantially higher than the net loss of NEO. In 2023, right now it's projected for their revenue to more than double up to $1.3 billion, while their net loss will lower to $2.3 billion, down from the original $2.6 billion. So just like NEO, both of these companies are scaling their revenues, they're scaling their deliveries, and they are lowering their overall net losses. Well, let's talk about the main flaw for Lucid and the main flaw for NEO. The main flaw for NEO is that they are a foreign company. If any geopolitical turmoil were to ensue with the United States and China, the NEO share price is going to absolutely absolutely fall very quickly. On the other hand, Lucid is having a hard time scaling their overall vehicle production, even though they believe that once they get the supply chains worked out, this will be very achievable. Right now, Lucid expects to produce 10,000 to 14,000 vehicles in 2023, and I also want to mention that the Saudi Arabian government has plans to buy 100,000 Lucid vehicles over the next decade. Another problem with this company is that their reservations actually faltered. Originally, they had around 37,000 reservations, which recently has been declining down to 28,000 reservations. The main flaw in this company is one, their vehicles are very highly priced, meaning they have a very select market, and two, their vehicle designs don't look very good. I've seen Lucid vehicles on the road, and they do not look like an impressive car, even though technologically, these companies, in my opinion, as of right now, have some of the fastest zero to 60 times, best acceleration in their class, and very long ranges. Their vehicles, like we said, are pricey, starting at around $89,000, but the company believes they will eventually increase their overall production to 500,000 vehicles by 2025. So what's the verdict when we compare NEO to Lucid? Well, honestly, for me, NEO has to take the cake here. Considering the company is only trading at 1.4 times this year's sales, making this company a great risk-to-reward ratio for investors. On the other hand, Lucid is trading at 11 times this year's sales, meaning that Lucid is over 4 to 5 times 
times more expensive, meaning that you as an investor, your dollar is not going to go as far in Lucid than it will in NEO. It also suggests for investors that considering the macroeconomic volatility we are experiencing right now, not only in the States, but worldwide, NEO is cheaper and the risk to reward is better, especially considering that we only have to wait until the second half of 2023 for this company to start appreciating. So overall, I like both of these companies. I have much more exposure to NEO than I do Lucid, but for NEO, I only have around a 3 to 4% allocation as of right now because Tesla is my main holding for electric vehicles. Speaking about Tesla, let's talk about them right now. Many investors were less than impressed with their recent delivery numbers. However, I think investors are overreacting. Another problem that investors are pointing out is that Tesla has inventory of unsold vehicles. And I'll tell you exactly why that is a little later in this video. I think despite sluggish demand, price cuts, and worldwide economic uncertainty, the fact that Tesla increased their deliveries by 4.3% is actually positive news. I also want to say the reason why they have quote-unquote inventory that they haven't been able to sell is that people aren't thinking that there are electric vehicles that are in transit, meaning that they are being moved from their facility to the actual place in which they are sold. While these vehicles are in transit, they are not sold and that means these vehicles count as if they are in a Tesla's overall supply. So I don't think that's a very good metric. Also, Tesla right now is judged as a growth company, considering that they are growing their average annual volume by close to 50%. Yes, I do think this company should be valued as a growth company, even though I do believe it is rather expensive. Despite lackluster results for quarter four deliveries, an increase of 4.3% is still a win. And considering supply chain issues and macroeconomic uncertainty, I am not going to be surprised if Tesla decides to bounce back. The only caveat I have with this company is that they are worth $650 billion as a company. That is more than the next seven largest automakers all combined. So anytime Tesla is to disappoint investors, we can anticipate their share price will go lower, which is what we are experiencing right now. However, I'm still a huge Tesla bull and I do believe they will grow into their overall valuation. That's what I'm betting on. Tesla's main competitive advantage is their ability to grow their overall production. When making electric vehicles or even anything that requires mass production, that is the hardest thing to scale. But Tesla's number one competitive advantage is their ability to manufacture vehicles, take advantage of economies of scale and brand awareness. With these three things working for them, it's slated that the company's sales will skyrocket to 20 million vehicles by 2030. The math right now would mean that the company has to sell around 1.8 million cars this year, 5 million cars by 2026, and then quadrupling that over the next four years after 2026 to meet this metric by 2030, and I think it's achievable. Tesla is coming out with new vehicles, their semi-trucks and the Tesla Cybertruck is going to be a part of this growth, and overall I am extremely bullish on Tesla. So despite what investors are saying in the short term, they clearly do not have a long-term outlook. But that would conclude our video for today. For more videos on SoFi Technologies, Palantir Technologies, Neo, Lucid, or Tesla, go and annihilate that like button right now. Comment your thoughts down below. Subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in the next YT video.